This meeting is being recorded. Okay, everybody. Hello. Uh, how y'all doing today? We are doing a wonderful show um, on abortion. Um, is it murder? Is it woman's divine, divine right to choose? We're going to talk about We're gonna it. Talk We're going to chop it up. We're going to see how it's going to go. Um, but first off, before we get started, my name is Christopher Times. Um, some people call me Reverend Christopher Times. I'm hosting, filling in for my friend, uh, Baruti Carl Alexander. And uh, I would like for my guests um, to introduce themselves. Let's see. Uh, Kanisha, would you go first? Let, let us know who you are and uh, how, can, how can we reach you? Yes, um, my name is Kenesha Grace Drayton, and I am a psychotherapist, and I can be reached on um, www.oasisoflifecounseling. I do have a private practice, um, and that's where you can reach me, or you can reach me on Facebook. I have a Facebook page called Oasis of Life Counseling as well, and I usually respond in less than 24 hours between 12 and 24 hours that's wonderful thank you so much thank you so much and thank you for being a part of the show today um zarina how are you doing today would you introduce yourself and let us know how to contact you absolutely how are you i'm incredible my name is maddie zarina whitfield i am a spiritual manifestation teacher and i'm also an entrepreneur i call it a fempreneur i have a women's organization called Global Women of Wealth, where we help women secure themselves financially, spiritually, and in their divine right. I can be reached in Instagram and Facebook. It's going to be I am, the actual word, A-M-M-Z Whitfield, W-H-I-T-F-I-E-L-D, and our women's organization, Wealthy Women on Instagram. Awesome, awesome, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for being a part of the show today. I have I have Dr. Napoleon Higgins. How are you doing, sir, today? Doing well, doing well. Yes, my name is Dr. Napoleon Higgins. I'm a child, adolescent, and adult psychiatrist in the Southeast Houston area, private practice. You can find me at Baypoint with an E, baypointbehavioral.com is where you can find my private practice at. I do mostly medication management and I see all ages, children, adolescents, and adults. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And I do think I see um, another individual. If you let me know who you are, I can't see your name. And tell us uh, a little bit about yourself, your name, and how, how people can reach you. Um, hi, my name is Celestine. Um, I am the one who has chosen to come to love. I am a spiritual teacher, healer. I do workshops for children and women. Uh, I am on Instagram underneath womb frequency, and that's all one word, W-O-M-B-F-R-E-Q-U-E-N-C-Y. And I'm also on Facebook underneath the same name. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you, Celestine. Thank you for you all being here today. We've got a, a robust topic here. Um, abortion. Is it murder? Um, what do you think about it? Or is it a woman's divine choice? What are the implications there? Um, I, I, let's see. What do you think? What do you think, uh, 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 Kanisha? What do you think? Well, um, you know, I am quite biased in this subject, um, and I'm not going to talk from a, a, a professional standpoint, although I do understand the, the psychological um, implications of abortions. But first off, I wanted to start off quickly by saying that I was pregnant um, and, con and I conceived my first child when I was 15. Mm -hmm. And I had her when I was 16. Got pregnant again at 16 and had him at 17. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so um, I come from a family where we're pro-life. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, there was a lot of um, hardship in certain areas of my life. And so, um, yes, that's just something that in my household we never talked about when I had um, female clients professionally. I never tried to talk them out of having an abortion for an unwanted pregnancy, mm. um, or that I talk them into keeping it. You know, no, I, I mean, I just got them to their own decision that they would like to make and support them on it. Mm. But personally, um, I come from a pro-life standpoint because, mm. you know, things happen. Mm. As they say, life happens to people, right? Yes. And, you know, I look at it from a, a moral core value um, angle. I am a Christian woman um, and have been for more than half of my life. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that's just something that I'm completely biased in because, you know, I was taught that, you know, whenever... You're out there and you're engaging in sex. And just because young women are engaging in sex doesn't mean that they're promiscuous, because I wasn't promiscuous. Um, my first two children's father, they, they have the same dad. Mm -hmm. You know, I was still going to high school, eventually went to college and things like that. But um, one thing that I always did was look at how you know, we can work with the pros and having a support system for teenage mothers and fathers that I did help in the past, you know, mm -hmm. if that's the route they want to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you see that option as being viable opposed to just, you know, going to the abortion clinic and that kind of thing. I guess that's what you're saying. Well, for me, you know, oh. um, because, I mean, there's a lot of things that you know, that takes place where women are in abusive situations. Um, mm -hmm. There are women out there, um, well, children, teen, you know, adolescent girls who are getting pregnant, you know, who have been molested and raped and things like that. And I, and I hear a lot of women who are pro-choice, they bring that up a lot and other things about the reproductive system you know, mm -hmm. where they have concerns and their their concerns are valid, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know the details about that because I'm not a medical doctor, but I do understand how traumatic it can be for a woman to terminate an unwanted pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's interesting and I appreciate that. Um, I'm thinking, let's see. Zarina, what do you think about that? What, what are your thoughts? Um, well, I first want to say I respect everybody's opinion in regards to this subject. Um, one of the things that just in my, my own personal, I'll talk from my personal and well, actually all of it's personal, it's my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pro-choice. Mm -hmm. I think that a woman should have the choice of doing what she wants to do with her body. Mm -hmm. God gave us choices. And no matter if whatever religion you identify with, if it's Christianity, if it's Muslim, if it's Buddha, if it's Buddhism, whatever it is, you still have a choice. Mm -hmm. And if God gave us a choice, then man should not be able to take that choice away from you. Mm -hmm. And particularly men. So I think that um, I've been in both situations. I have two children and I've had two abortions. Mm -hmm. And those abortions when I was young. Um, and if I could go back, I would do it again. Mm -hmm. Because with the choice and I just chose not to endure the hardship of being a teen parent. I chose to not participate. I mean, we don't, we're not taught enough prevention or at least I wasn't taught enough prevention and then the gentleman that I was dating at that time 
would have loved to have had children by me to keep me in his life forever. But mm -hmm. that was that I desired. And I couldn't imagine being a young girl right now not having that choice. I have friends who have had babies young and their children are great. Their lives are great. And it was a choice. I think mm -hmm. the our first amendment, freedom of speech and freedom. So if you have freedom, then how can they tell you that you don't have the freedom to do what you choose to do with your body? Mm -hmm. The other things that I think that's not being taken into consideration, okay, pro-life. So they want you to choose to have this baby. What after that? While you're pregnant, the government is going to offer you they're going to offer to actually do your hospitalization for that. And that's a whole different subject when it comes to Black women. And But after the baby is what about the baby? What about clothing the baby? What about pampers and wipes? I have young people that I mentor who are struggling in their mid-20s and they can't afford pampers. They can't afford whites and there is no assistance for them. There's no one offering all of those things. They may give it to them once, but on a consistent basis, the things that a baby needs, those people that are so pro-life, what are you offering these people? We have a short time for them. So how are you going to feed these children? We have over 3 million children who are homeless. If we can't house those, then how are we going to have more children? What's going to happen to those kids? So I don't think that all the factors were taken into account when they decided to reverse this. They're just thinking, oh, it's murder. Well, spiritually, from my standpoint, it's a spirit. And I believe spirits, if that spirit was supposed to be with you, that spirit will return to you. I believe the two children that I have now were the two children that I would have had before. They came back. We have a great life. There you go. I know other people who have had a miscarriage or an abortion, whatever that number is, they have those children in existing life today. So I don't think that all of the factors from a financial standpoint, from a spiritual standpoint, and just a choice, we have a choice to choose to mess up or not. So that's the small opinion of mine so far. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, all right. All right, Dr. Napoleon Higgins. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. What, what, what say ye about this? Well, I will, you know, uh, man, it's a very interesting topic. And, and uh, much love. My heart goes out to, you know, to women. You know, um, I'm not a woman. You know, I only have one X chromosome, so I'm X chromosome deficient. Um, so I, you know, I, I don't know the experience of a woman, but I've been around women my entire life and, and, and I can at, at some level of understand the pain and the issue of making a decision, mm -hmm. um, regarding, you, you know, your, your personal life. So my, my thought is that it's a person's decision. Mm -hmm. Now I may agree with your decision and I may disagree with your decision but I do not feel like I should be making that decision for you. Mm -hmm. So am I for abortions? No, not really. Am I against abortions? I'm definitely not against them, all right? You know, and there are multiple reasons on why a person may make that decision. And as a man who sees women, obviously that's gonna be at least half or more of the population that I see. I have worked with women who've had to, you know, who decided to have abortions. And I've worked with women who decide to keep the child. And so I never tell a person what to do because I don't have to raise that kid, nor do I have to deal with the consequences of the decision. But what I will help you do is explore how you come to making the decision of what to do. Uh, so, you know, and understand that a lot of this is, you know, it, along with the decision to have sex and when to have sex, you have the issue of the medical problems that go with having a child, especially when it comes to Black women. Black women are more likely to die during childbirth and their children are more likely to be smaller and more likely to die as well. So there's this medical component that doesn't affect the entire population equally. So sometimes you're looking at the issue of abortion being, I may die 
if I carry this child all the way through. And the thought that, well, as a black woman, you're more likely to get sick, more likely to get ill, and more likely to die during, during pregnancy. But because you can't have an abortion, it's better for you, I mean, as a, as a state of Texas, backed up by the United States Supreme Court, that we can disallow your ability to have an abortion, and now you've got to go and scramble to, get, to go get regular old health care. So you have a lot of OBGYNs who are very afraid uh, to do an abortion even when they need to. And have I seen abortions done? Yes. Oddly enough, I've never seen an elective abortion in my training. Now I'm a psychiatrist all day, so I'm not in the blood and guts. And if I got to shake your hand, that, may, that means we met before COVID. All right, mm. so I don't even touch folk, you know, at this point in my, in my life and career, but I've definitely been on teams where we had to do abortions and things of that sort. And every last one of them, and it was a very busy service where the, the child had passed away or died or there was some medical issue going on, mom's blood pressure, heart rate is through the roof. And there was a need that you had to go and do something or you may lose the mother and the child. Not to mention sometimes the child just passes away and you have people who have to continue to carry the child, the dead baby in their body because the state has said that you can't, you can't abort that baby or the doctor's afraid of the backlash of just doing simple medical procedures for women. So to me, part of this issue is a sexist issue. Mm -hmm. that you're going to deny medical services to people because they have a uterus and a womb and they bring life into the world. If there's anybody who needs rights, we need to be protecting our mothers and, and our daughters and, and everyone else. That's who we should be protecting. But we're actually talking about taking rights from humans mm -hmm. in America who is half the population. And so you never know the reasoning in that, you know, people have to have babies because they were raped. I mean, you're literally walking down the, you know, your, your, your hospital. I mean, you're walking down your college sidewalk and some dude knocks you over the head and starts having sex with you. And according to the law, you got to have that person's baby. After they raped you, you don't even know who this guy is. The issue of incest. Mm -hmm. Incest happens all the time. Realizing that one in four women are going to be molested before they turn 18 years old. That's, That's right. one in four. So you're saying that, all right, I'm 11 years old. I've been coerced in having sex with my uh, my uh, my softball coach at 11, he's 40, and I've got to now have this child at 11. To me, I don't I don't get that. I don't understand that. And then the flat out, sometimes people make a bad decision, you know, or coercion. You know, somebody you've been working with, yada yada yada. They've been telling a bunch of lies, yada yada yada. You have sex with this person, you get pregnant. Not to mention you got drunk the other night, had too much to drink. You don't even remember having sex with this person. You woke up in the bed, unclothed, and you don't even realize what actually happened. Mm -hmm. You got to have that person's child. You know, so to me, uh, you know, to me, it's an issue of taking away the rights of women, even though I don't like for people to get abortions, especially you two grown folk. Y'all both got jobs. Y'all are both working and life is going good. Y'all had sex. To me, you got blessed with the baby and y'all decide to terminate. I'm not happy about that, but I'm not in those people's lives in their homes. Because you never know, she might be married. Or you never know, you know, might she might have had sex with him simply because he's aggressive and she was afraid. So it wasn't rape, but it seemed to be the easiest way out of this situation. You have no idea what could have occurred in that relationship where you're going to make somebody have to sign up to have that kid for the rest of their lives. And you're not going to actually help to even protect or grow or give resources to take care of that child. Mm -hmm. and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll stop there. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. What do you think about that, Celeste? Celeste, let's have your opinion on this, your thoughts. Uh, Celestine. Um, oh, okay. My perception is I can agree with everybody, but my perception is totally different. Everything is vibration. Everything is frequency. So when this Roe versus Wade was overturned, I had to ask as a collective, what are we trying to create? Because first of all, 
even when we say they, they is also we. We're all in this together. We're all one. So what is the perception that I got about this that we are trying to create? For me, this is a gift to women to wake up and to realize how much power and control they actually have over their own bodies. They need to remember the old ways and put them into practice. We don't need abortion clinics. If you don't wish to have a, a, a baby, you don't have to have one. You have total control over every aspect of your body. When I first started my cycle, I didn't have a monthly cycle. It came when my body felt it necessary for it to come. But I was programmed, oh, you're supposed to have a cycle every 28 days. So, oh, something's wrong with you. So I went to the doctor so they could give me pills so I can have a cycle every, every month. And that messed up my system. You can talk to your body. A woman can talk to your body and say, hey, I don't want to have a cycle unless I have a baby. That's the way we used to do it. You may not remember, but I do. I have talked to my body and body and say, hey, I'm going on vacation. I don't wish for you to come, sister girl. And she didn't come. Women, the, the female energy is awakening. And it's not about us being out of balance where the woman takes over the head like the male has been doing, it's about balance. It's about balance of frequency. And I find it very curious as to why this point of time they decided to over overturn Roe versus Wade. This is not about a woman's rights. This is not about religion. There is another objective going on here. So the question is, all the narrative that's been put in our face, are we going to accept it? I'm not accepting it. I'm teaching the women and the young girls that I know, you do not have to accept it. You are the I am. You are God, goddess over your life, your world, your being. This is not what you have to create. If you don't want to have a cycle, talk to your body and tell your body, no cycle. Only when I wish to become pregnant. That's my perception. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Powerful. Um, I, you know, I've heard some of those uh, teachings, and um, it's very interesting um, about it. But yeah, you know, the human mind is powerful. I believe that. Um, and you know, you can use the mind to even control pain. Um, uh, there are lots of things that we. I guess, speaking to that, uh, Celestine, those old ways, uh, lots of things that we used to do, we don't do anymore. <laughs> so that makes sense to me in that, that perspective. I know um, to the abortion issue, um, and I'm not a woman, of course, but I remember being you know, married, my first uh, marriage, and sure enough, uh, that ectopic pregnancy, issue came up twice um and you know my my wife african-american uh went she had her tubes tied clipped burned right doctor says 98 percent or whatever that percentage was you can't get pregnant well that was a lie um i said one out of three million chance you're gonna get pregnant i'm not sure doc doc you probably know the stat well, on the left side, there's the Nick topic prayer. There's the baby. And we didn't even know. We we're like, it's impossible. Why are these pains happening in your pelvis? We, I'm laying hands on her and praying every night. And every night, her, you know, more and more pain, more and more, her skin started to glow. She literally took on quite a few pregnancies. And so we're like, we're going to go to the hospital, went to the emergency room. And before I could say, uh, give me the bill, um, they were rolling her to the emergency room. I mean, to the ER. 
and I had to sign some documents. They pushed them in my face and said, you got to sign these papers or your wife's going to die. I'm like, what? Ectopic pregnancy. And then the next year happened again. So it, yes, yes, yeah, exactly. So and that was way back in 1997, you know, and, and so you, you, you know, so the doctors, you know, and, and my wife had, she had a female physician, a black female physician, you know, OBGN. And it was, it was some terrible stuff. And, and so, you know, she almost lost her life twice behind this. Had the laws been the, the way they are now, back then, and Roe v. Wade was struck down then, she'd have died. 100%. She'd have died. Period. You know? We'd have been having her funeral. So I can see it from that perspective. That I've done that. I've been down that road twice. I don't know what y'all's thoughts are about that, but to me, it's, it's, it's a real serious thing when, you know, somebody's health is in, in you know, uh, in, in jeopardy. And uh, there are people out there who want to play God. There are people out there who want to play politics. Anybody thoughts? I think in that case, that is um, a, a horrible experience, but a great example to when I say that I don't think the entire process has been thought. So in that case, you would have had to, what, choose the baby? But there is no baby. Like, right. there is no baby to choose. So when you say you're choosing a life, the life is the mother. Mm -hmm. So in that instance, you're going to choose to let a human being who has been living in this world die because you want to preserve the life of a baby that's not even here. And let's just say that in the instance that you have to choose the mother over the child and they choose the child. Well, now who's going to raise the baby? And then what right. are the psychological effects of the child knowing that their mother died because they were born? So who helps that child later on in life when that child is depressed and has issues and things of that nature? What is the support that that child will receive out of their mother passing because they were born. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what I would say is that more than likely in case of ectopic pregnancy, they're still gonna do that regardless of abortions. Mm. So essentially that is a medical emergency where you wanna get rolled in. But there are a lot of other decisions that are a lot less easy to make, you know, on who's gonna live and who's gonna die. But because of issue of racism and racial disparities in medicine, they're not going to choose life for that black mom when mm -hmm. they don't have the right. More black women are going to die because of this than any other race in this country mm -hmm. because of just um, a unconscious, unrecognized racism within the doctors themselves. And so hmm. you go, it's going to end up being more deaths. And so when you look at these decisions, it's a class issue. Hmm. You know, so essentially, if I'm white and my child gets pregnant, uh, then, you know, even though abortion is illegal in Texas, well, we've got the money to fly you wherever you want to go. But a lot well, of people, you know, with, with, and outside of that class won't be able to do that. So hmm. now we've got to take the chance and we've got to take the risk. Say if you become ill during the pregnancy, and the doctor can make the decision on what's an emergency, what is not. And they're facing the thought that I may get in trouble if I make the decision that's against the state. Mm -hmm. So because of my fear, I decide we're just going to watch it for another week and see how it goes. And then you're looking at the mm -hmm. demise of the mother and the child, realizing mm -hmm. that if the, especially if the baby is already gone and passed. Right. What? You got to now walk around with your dead baby in your body for how long? Because, mm -hmm. the, I mean, that doesn't make any sense. The baby is gone. It's only putting you now at a medical risk of bleeding out at that point. That doesn't make any sense. And to me, we, we've got to be smarter about what we're doing. And those are the consequences. So the consequences are actual death of women and of Black women, especially because we're the most likely to die during the issue of doing childbirth, mm -hmm. uh, carrying the baby, pregnancy, delivery, and the child is more likely to die. So when doctors are now having to make a decision according to what the state wants you to do, it doesn't go in our favor. 
and it's a class issue. And more people who are poor and more black folk are going to die because of this decision making. There is a case that I heard on the news this week. Um, there was a lady, maybe y'all heard of it. I'm thinking it was up north. I can't remember where it was at. But anyway, the lady had that very issue doc come up and they let her literally bleed for 10 days because they didn't want to perform. She miscarried apparently and they didn't want to go and do whatever the, the doctors do to, to, to take care of the rest. Uh, uh, you know, um, uh, of the procedure. And so they let her bleed for 10 days. They said that there was like a liter of blood that she bled before they decided to go ahead and, and, and actually finish, you know, uh, you know, take care of the miscarriage and everything. I, I assume, I don't know what all is involved, but that was just that one case. And then there's that other case. I don't know about y'all, but it plenty got me mad. I got a 12 year old daughter. This, 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 y'all know what I'm talking about. That 10 year old girl that was in Ohio and then she had to go to Illinois and then they tried to get the doctor for doing, you know, the humane thing, uh, you know, and, and, and doing the abortion. Oh, that's crazy. You know, I don't understand that in my mind that, that, that just is incomprehensible. Some people don't have a heart. That's just my bias. And, you know, so they do a lot of evil things. I'm going, I'm calling it evil. And, you know, it just don't make no sense. You know, it, traumatizing that child over and over again, I don't understand. In Pennsylvania, they have proposed the death penalty. What? For, they have proposed the death penalty for women who would choose to get an abortion. Oh, Jesus. Like, what? So yeah. I just, understand the vibing up huh. and the awareness that women um, are going to have to do. And when this was happening and it was a small discussion, but a big discussion, I was looking for the organizations or the um, events for people to speak out, like what we're doing now. Um, the conversations before it became law, the mm. protests before it became law. Mm. Like now that it's a law, everyone is talking about it and all of that good stuff. But before when they first proposed it, it wasn't as much attention as now. So for mm. me, it's like now what? Mm. Okay, propose this to be a law. Now what? Now what mm. because this cannot stay a law. You have men and nothing against men. I love my men. You have men who are deciding what to do with a woman's body and other women who are probably well past their reproductive age deciding what is going to happen. So now those that are young and can still produce or whatever the case may be, like even when you think about it from an adoption standpoint, when people want to adopt kids, it's so difficult. And it costs so much. So you're going to have a lot of these kids that are going to go to the system. And you have people who want to get these kids. So is that process going to become simpler? Hmm. Are there going well, see, to... Go ahead. That is, 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 and that's all part of the energy that, that they want to create. It is the breaking down of a civilization. It is the breaking down, the destructuring of a people. So with it is, we can talk forever in a day about all the negative things that we, that could possibly, or, or some say definitely going to happen. What kind of solutions can we input to, present, to stop that before it happens? Well, I mean, so, no, I'm, go ahead, so, I'm sorry. Yeah, so Maddie made a good point. Sometimes for people, it takes for us, the human experience, it takes for us to be pushed against the wall, to be knocked against the wall before we finally do something. It is not about marching. It's not about walking. It's not about protesting. 
What specifically can we do to say, okay, we're going to stop this. We're going to break down this. We're not going to do this. We're going to get together collectively and raise the vibration. And when this is over, we are acting as if, and we, and this is, and I include myself because I've been on this earth enough years where I've been programmed that we don't have the power, that we have a, a system that is supposed to be quote unquote for the people, but doesn't listen to the people. So now it is time for what? A system, and I'm not talking about tearing or bow down any other any system. It is time to create a system that is actually for the people. And if this is what we collectively needed for us to say, okay, we're against the wall because we can see a number of ramifications that can happen, what are we going to do? Because we can talk forever in the day about the problem, about the negative things that we're, we, we think can happen. What are some solutions? How can I, how can we help these, these, this situation? I so, would be game to, to go over that. I don't talk over and so, over again about what the negativity of what can happen. I want to know how we can help. So what about, you know, there are other, and I know, Doc, you wanted to say something. Uh, I'm going to let you, you know, uh, say what you're going to say there. Um, and, and then I have something to say about that. What, what uh, are your I mean, thoughts? One one thing that we've got to do a better job of is teaching and understanding sex education. Oh, yeah. A, a lot of people, oddly enough, the more you teach children about sex, the less sex that they have. Mm. That's st statistically. Because they're going to talk about sex. But when you're 13 years old, when you're a 13-year-old girl and your 15-year-old boyfriend is talking to you about sex, it's going to be a whole different conversation than if mm. your dad was telling you or your mother was telling you. You know, I've taught sex education classes, and it is amazing to not realize how many women don't even know their body parts. Mm. They don't know. A lot of women don't. I would say, I would say at least 40% of women don't know that their urine and babies comes from two, two different places. Mm. So when you don't understand how your body works, you don't understand how your, your cycle works. Uh, you don't know the consequences of having sex and raising babies and sexually transmitted diseases and things that can occur in, in your overall needed health. Boys are not thinking about how their bodies and these things that, you know, realizing that most STDs occur when the, before the person is age, age 21, 22, and how they can cause issues of sterility, things of that sort. So when you only have your boys and rap music and videos and TikTok and movies showing you what sex is mm -hmm. you're more likely to engage in behaviors that you don't quite understand mm -hmm. so so to me part of the way to decrease the risk of people getting pregnant is just teaching them about their bodies and sexuality and romance and touch and things of that sort if a person touches here you want to feel that way if they touch there long enough you're going to feel a whole different kind of way but that does not mean that you're in love with that person Mm -hmm. These are body and reflex, reflex, reflexive responses to physical touch and human behavior and nature and sexuality. So the thing is that one, one way to decrease the risk of having sex and having babies is understanding how your body works. Mm -hmm. And it cuts out a whole lot of, you know, um, I'm, I'm 10 years old and my 31 year old uncle is trying to touch on me and me mm -hmm. being able to understand what that is going to do. Because mm -hmm. knowing how, knowing that you have a uterus, knowing that you're about to start uh, 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 cycles, is not a negative thing for a woman to know. At all. All right. That's just that that's going to happen, and that does not make you say, "I want to go have sex with my uncle." Mm -hmm. It actually makes you resist the idea, but they're taking that away as well. They're taking away the right to know how your own body works, and they want control of your body. So, what is the vibration? The right. vibration is that they want control. They want ultimate control, and they're getting that because they they've got this. <laughs> they're not going to codify uh, uh, Roe v. Wade women's rights to choose their health care in law. They've been fighting on that. I think the House passed something, but you know it's 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 so bizarre, uh, and 
and I, I call it evil, you know, when you have these individuals um, who are, let me just say religious, because that's who made this decision, correct? On, on you know, uh, these religious individuals or zealots, maybe, um, on, you know, the Supreme or Court. Hypocrites. Or hypocrites, absolutely. And, 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 and they decide, hey, we're going to do this, that, and the other. Makes no sense whatsoever. Matter of fact, I heard an argument that all of this stuff, and they, you know, they're couching it on um, religion, right? In the Bible, right? You know, and it says that, you know, don't kill and all this stuff. Well, the, the, the thing is, that was never an issue throughout the entire United States up until what? I think Pat Robertson Pat or Robertson. one of those, <laughs> one of those uh, people back in those days come up to, with something that says, hey, we need, we need to make something political. We need to separate the wheat from the chaff. You know, the Republicans, we're going to bring up pro-life thing. That's going to be our issue. And then we're going to run on that and everybody got to choose a side. Well, that's a political thing. It has nothing to do with religion, but they dovetail, you know, that uh, that political thing, or they made it out to be political, a woman's right to choose what to do with her own body. They done that, and it's like, hey, that doesn't make any good sense. So it's a real big problem. Um, I don't know what the solution could be. What do y'all think? I mean, how do we get around it? They mean I have a question. Oh. <laughs> Just I, go go yes, ahead. I have a yes, I have a question. What are the percentages of an ectopic pregnancy? Because I hear that quite often, you know, with especially amongst women who are pro-choice. What are the, the percentages of an ectopic uh, pregnancy? Because okay. it just it just comes off as fear-based. Um you know, because I, I hear people saying, well, she can die. She can do this. All the panic and fear since um, Roe versus Wade um, overturned. I mean, it was a shock for everybody. And, you know, I am pro-life, as I stated before, and I have my reasons for it. I used to be pro-choice, but um, I understand why many women are pro-choice and you know they're pro-choice for their reasons and it's okay however whenever i did my research about planned parenthood you know number one you see more planned parenthood clinics in um marginalized communities you know that's what i see a lot and margaret sanger she did not create um, the, the clinic, Planned Parenthood, you know, just for white women who just don't want to have a baby and mess up their bodies. It was created for black women. You know, it was all about the survival of the fittest. You know, they made it seem like it was for women who were rebellious. It was that too, but it wasn't merely for that. You know, a lot of Darwinism was involved in that. And so um, I'm just really concerned because like, you know, just like if a woman fears an un unwanted or unplanned pregnancy, you know, just like we have options for abortions, we also have options for birth control too. If you want to live your best life and, and do as you please, you know, you, I mean, especially for adults. Well, you have yeah. a lot. I mean, what are the options? But see, you, you, know, you say that, but I mean, I'm, I'm just going to throw that in. I, like I said earlier, uh, my wife went through and two, I mean, how, how much more can you ask for two ectopic pregnancies, one a year after the other, one in 97, one in 98, they said it, you know, it was impossible almost, but it happened, you know, right? So, you know, it's got to be pretty common, you would think, 
for but say, what are the what are the percentages of it though? What, 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 it makes a lot of difference. It makes it makes a whole lot of difference. Doc Doc Higgins what? got the answer. Doc yeah, Higgins. one in fifty. So one in fifty pregnancies is, is ectopic. Yeah. Which, Can you repeat that, please? One in fifty. One in fifty. But that's those are high odds, oh. okay? Those are super high odds. Okay. Think about that. But Every even, like one in a million. It's not one in a thousand. It's one in fifty pregnancies are ectopic. Which so means the whole pregnancy is a pregnancy oh, okay. that's in the tube. The tube will rupture, and if you don't get mm -hmm. into surgery quickly, you will be dead shortly thereafter if they yeah. don't get you in quick. Right. One in that's what I learned. Yes. What, yes, which, I learned is, how dangerous it can which be. It's, it's deadly. Which is like I told you before. Yeah. You know, I, I rushed my wife to the hospital. And I had seconds, I'm talking about seconds before they rushed her back to the, you know, to the ER. They said, if we don't, if we don't get this done right now, she's going to die. And well, that, that's they, understandable, you know, and see, it's a, it's a no judgment zone, you know, as I, you know, as I talk to you guys, you know, um, we're all here stating our experiences and, you know, our perception of reality is about these things and um you know that's why i asked about that you know what are the percentages of that you know because you know we have abstinence you know and we have other forms of birth control as well you know we also have discipline well well see that now i'm just gonna Those step in now I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna step in now um, mm -hmm. Now I'm, I, you know, of course y'all know. Okay, I'm a pastor. I'm a religious guy. Grew up in the church. Preached for thirty years. All this good stuff. And I'm here to tell you that a lot of stuff you just said to me sounds a little bit hypocritical, because when you're dealing with a child who who mm -hmm. can't choose, okay, um, she can't choose. Uh, and she's raped, right? You can't, you know, uh, Doc, I've, I've, I've looked at, and I did my thesis, my master's thesis on trauma, childhood sexual trauma, as a matter of fact. Well, I mentioned and, about that well, earlier. Well, let me just say I this now. I mentioned about that too. Let me just say this, okay? okay. I, did my, I did my thesis on this, okay? Childhood sexual trauma, all right? One out of every two girls are sexually molested. Those are the numbers that I, I got when I did my thesis. One out of every four boys sexually molested. Uh, when I was in Appalachia, I did my residency in Appalachia, right? Um, and I worked in the emergency department with a lot of doctors like you, Dr. Higgins. And uh, I did psych. I did psych evaluations, right? And I'm here to tell you, I've seen a lot of patients who didn't have the ability to choose, but they were raped by their uncle, they were raped by their daddy, they were raped by somebody they didn't know, okay? This stuff happens way more than we think. There's a doctor named Dr. Gabor Mate out of Canada. He, he kind of talks about that because he's done a lot of trauma work too. And, you know, there are hundreds of thousands of kids who grow up to be adults who sexually molested. Those are the hidden numbers. Um, and, and so who knows how many people are like that 10 year old girl that never get reported or like a uh, lots of other people. It could be, you know, anybody else, you know? But hey, how is that hypocritical raped. with what I said, though? I want to know how that was hypocritical. Because I understand that, like I was stating at first, when you had asked me about um, my take on it. Right. Now, I said that those circumstances, those are valid circumstances where, you know, teenage girls or teen, you know, I, I mean, I've actually witnessed this myself. You know, I've had children in my classroom, whenever I was in education, who have been through this. Those are valid circumstances where someone could have an abortion, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm sorry, just a moment, please. 
I'm sorry, I had a little minor interruption. So um, I've seen where that happened before. But see, I mean, do, does that really count as pro-life, pro-choice? I why, mean, why, because why unless you're- Well, let me say this, please let why, me say this. I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't finished, yeah, hold on. I wasn't finished with my with uh, my point, just a moment, please. Um, but what I'm talking about, what I'm making reference to is, you know, when it comes to sex education, see, I started having my babies in the, the mid nineties, okay? So we had sex education, you know? And see back then, at that time, that's whenever teenage pregnancies were booming. And I know it doesn't always be like that for everyone. Every, you know, it's circumstantial. But the thing is that a lot of this has a lot to do with generational curses. A lot of mothers are not talking to their daughters. See, in sex education classes, you know, they teach you about what Dr. Napoleon was talking about, you know, the hormones and, you know, the reflexes. And, and that is valid, too. I totally agree with all of that. Mm -hmm. But from a moral standpoint, why are we not teaching our children or students, for that matter, about, yes, you will have these types of feelings, you know, but what about marriage? Because we have a higher rate of Black women than any other race having abortions. That's not true. I think that's not true either. Yeah, that's I think not it's true. really, really white it's women. Not true. White women have way more. You see, that's, see those, you, those are, go ahead, uh, Celestine. That's, that's, still, you, that's right? still irrelevant. What's, but, what's valid to me is not something I should impose on another person. What my definition of moral is, and I do not believe in the word morals, I can't put that on somebody else. Yeah, yeah. You know you can right yeah. Please let me finish. You have a right to decide how you wish to live your life. I do not agree with the word promiscuity. It is your body. I may not like it. Matter of fact, I should even like or dislike it because it is your it is your experience as a spiritual being on this earth to have the experience that you came to experience. I shouldn't have a judgment about it. I shouldn't even have a comment about it, but we do. It is time for us to look at ourselves from a whole different perspective as a collective and allowing a person to be, have the freedom of expression to be who they be. Now, somebody will take this far and say, oh, well, somebody has the right to be a murderer. Somebody has a right to be a rapist. I cannot explain all that. But what I can say is that your body is yours. It does not need validating. Your body is yours. You chose to have babies at a young age. I'm not going to come and say, oh, girl, you was just a baby. And you had babies and you didn't turn around and did it again. Or, oh, she got baby by four different, four different daddies. That's not in my business. I'm not, if I see you and me, I'm not judging you. Yeah, well, we have different core values and I respect that. Yeah, and that's okay. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, but I mean, people well, will, let, regardless let me, of the let, law. People let me will. ask y'all this. Okay, hold on. I, I sat here for 20 minutes and let everybody talk. Okay, I understand that. I understand that my perspective is a bit unorthodox from what, you know, you guys are thinking. But my thing is that, you know, when I was talking about teaching sex education and all of that, I'm talking about from a moral compass. You know, that's what I believe in. That may not be your core value and that's okay. But see, what I believe in teaching and from a Christian standpoint is that, you know, yes, you know, your body is your body, of course, but instead of teaching them about, you know, if you go out there and go get pregnant, you know, you could just remedy that real fast. Just go get an abortion. There are They're consequences for our, hold on just a moment. There are consequences for your actions because for one of mine, you know, that's, that's how I was, you know, I was like that. 
I just didn't have an abortion for my reasons that I didn't do that. But I come from a household where we didn't talk about it that much, whereas I talked about it with, with sex education with my own children. You know, let's talk about love. Let's talk about what your expectations are in a man or a woman. If you don't see yourself um, being married to them or don't believe that they will be a good role model for your child, why are you procreating with them? Why are you not protecting yourself? Well. You know, that's how that's we, how I talk. We really you know, have my to, children and it work very well. We, I mean we we really have to wrap up. I, I just want to give everybody one last word uh on this, and I know it's a hot topic. I'm sorry to cut you off. Uh, mm -hmm. but uh but but you know, we're never gonna all agree on, you know, on this one thing. But uh Zarina, what were your thoughts? I saw your hand moving, I saw your lips moving. Well, yeah, what are your thoughts? Talking about um, the Christianity and just leave this. Um, when I was in, um, I've been in both spectrums, the spiritual spectrum, the Christianity spectrum, and now I've found what I need to be in the middle. And I went to a church who preached and taught abstinence. And oddly enough, she taught abstinence. She was very good at it. She put it with the Bible and everybody in that church ended up pregnant. We all had babies. We all, it's like seven of us that got babies back to back to back to back in the same year. And we are abstinence. We practice sustainability. We did it from a Christian standpoint. It was just something that just happened. Then when we talk about the um, educational portion of it and teaching and marriage, you have women that are married that don't want to have babies by their husbands. And they should have that right to choose. You have people who are done building their family, but they still engage in being together. They should have a right to choose. So in so many different circumstances, these young women, they believe they love these boys. They believe that these boys are going to be um, around. And that's another part also. There is no accountability for young men. There is no accountability for men. If you get this young lady pregnant and she has to keep the baby, what about you? What are you now going to have to do? Because yes, they have child support, but that's still a choice. Some people don't pay, some people get away. The young lady ends up being the person that's in a hotel or struggling to be able to feed her baby and it's her baby. And that young man gets to go and make another baby. So there are so many different variables that go into this, which is why I believe it should be a personal decision for different people because who knows she may love him they may get along for two years three years and then they don't they outgrew each other so now what you have different scenarios you have people who i do agree with dr napoleon where he said we need to teach more women about their body we need to teach more boys about their body and respecting their body loving and the consequences of how much it takes to have a child when my sisters were pregnant, I actually broke down or when she was considering it. Let's break down what it takes to take care of a baby from a financial standpoint. Let's break down how much to feed them over the next 18 years, what it would actually cost you to be able to do this. I actually think from a financial standpoint, a part of this and making people have babies, you're going to increase well, not necessarily because that's a choice also, but the poverty rates for those that are not awakened are gonna increase. You have a lot of young people who are staying in hotels. You have a lot of young people who are homeless and they're homeless with their children. What about them? And now you're telling them that they don't have a choice to have this baby or not. Who's gonna help take care of them? Who's yeah, well, well, I won't say anything else about it because you know, I, I, mean, I mean, I take, I mean, with, with my perception of all it is, it comes from a conservative standpoint that I don't think any of you are ready to hear from me. And that's okay. You no, know, we, because as I was to you for about as, 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 as I was, you know, according, according, according to my faith. You 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 talking you talking to a Baptist preacher right here. I don't think yeah, you can be no gonna, more we, conservative than I am. I grew up yeah. in a, I'm a Southern well, I mean, Baptist, the thing is that, so. Yeah, uh, I'm I, apostolic. Well, yeah, know, so. yeah. I've, I've been down that way too. 
Dr. Napoleon, what, yeah. what, what say you, sir? Let's yeah. wrap it up. What say okay. you, sir? The uh, only thing I would say is uh, I've been a doctor a very long time, and I've been a psychiatrist a very long time. People are going to be people, and they're going to do people things. So mm -hmm. the thought that people are going to stop having babies and not have babies out of marriage, because it sounds like everybody around here, I would bet money that everybody in this call has had, baby, had sex outside of marriage. Uh, at some point yes, in their lives. Uh, it, we've all seemed to have admitted to that tonight. You know, So people are going to be people, they're going to make judgments as such. Understand that making abortions illegal will not stop abortions. What they will sure do won't. is now you're going to have friends taking coat hangers and taking babies out. So the, the yeah. making abortions illegal is actually going to cause a medical, going to cause more medical emergencies. That was a, just a couple of days ago, they found a woman in the park dead who was bleeding from her, her bottom area. Mm. Now, they didn't say mm. what for or what from, but you're going to start seeing more and more of this, and it's not going to stop it. I do believe that the lack of marriage, you know, in the Black community is increasing the risk of having abortions and sex outside of marriage, and that people are going to have sex. I can guarantee you they're going to have sex. It's like breathing. You can hold your breath as long as you want to, but you're going to inhale at some point. And the question is, what situation are you in when you do that? And, and the last thing I'll end with is, they haven't stopped yet. They're talking about taking away birth control. Right. They're talking about taking away condoms, IUDs, right. and all of that. Because essentially, when people cannot control how they have sex, they take, they're taking out education. They're taking out knowing anatomy. They're taking out abortion. They're talking about condoms and day after pills and IUDs and birth control. What it is is about population control. And the vibration, as our sister talked about, is it's about control and putting people in poverty. And a lot of people yes. want to have not because they don't have control over their own bodies, their destination, their destinies, or their generations. Yes, yes. And my, have a, and my final word is. Yes, ma'am. Chaos is creativity. I oh, that's interesting. We are in. We have been in chaos. Woo! If you, my perception, this is a wonderful time to be alive, because we are recreating our system our way of living, our way of being. It is, it is going to be really fantastic to see how when, they, when the quote unquote they starts making all these changes, how we collectively choose to bound together and say no more. Yes, excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, with that, uh, you know, um... Uh, I think we should uh, wrap it up. We could probably go on and on for another hour or two because it's such a hot topic. It's such it's so relevant, and and differing opinion, opinions we do have, but I think that um, we should continue this on another uh, on another broadcast to be continued. Peace. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Bye. Thank you Bye. so much, y'all.